Hello, this is Angela with Progress Permaculture. Please ignore my messy bedside table right now. I am hiding in my room and this is obviously an impromptu video. So I'm in here, me and Athena, my poodle and I, because uh, people in my family are starting to drop like flies from COVID. So we are all trying to isolate from each other as much as possible and wear masks in the house and um, yeah. So my husband is a public school teacher and we knew it was just a matter of time before he brought COVID home because you know, you know how it is and uh, nobody wears masks anymore. Nobody uh, wants to pretend that COVID is still a serious health concern for people. However, it is circulating in the community at a pretty high level. And so I knew it was a matter of time before he brought it home. And so in an attempt to keep those who can possibly avoid transmission from uh, getting sick, we are really keeping to ourselves. And, you know, those of us who are doing well are trying to take walks outside. My husband, who is sick but with a very mild case, is actually sitting outside in the garden so that he can avoid breathing the same air as us. And before I hear comments about how like COVID is really mild and we shouldn't be worried, you know, two of my members of my household, when they had COVID the first time, were very, very ill. And one of those members ended up with long COVID symptoms that lasted for months, uh, including uh, difficulty breathing and, you know, lost a lot of weight and muscle mass. And it took a really long time to recover, a uh, significant loss of stamina and uh, just a hard time breathing with exercise. So we're trying to be as, as careful so because as I'm trying to avoid my family members and stay healthy because you know what happens if mom gets sick it's um it's not a great scene if mom goes down for the count so I went on a long walk this evening and as I was coming back from my walk there's there's my neighborhood Park Rose and the neighborhood right across the main road is Maywood Park and so I usually walk Park Rose and then I walk over and walk Maywood Park and then walk back so I'm walking back from Maywood Park and I can see my house you know, four houses down. And I can see that there are some people in my front yard milling about and going through my front yard and into the plantings and along the driveway. And so I speed up a little bit because we live in a neighborhood where sometimes you get your cars broken into, I mean, everywhere in Portland is like that. And then I notice that what they're doing is that they're, they're picking fruit in my front yard. There is an Italian plum tree in my front yard that is uh, ripening. And then there's still grapes in my front yard, but not very many. So this is the second time in the last two days that folks have been in my front yard picking fruit without asking first. I was in the house yesterday and I got a text from my next door neighbor and it was like, hey girl, like we're, we're basically like brother, sister. We've been neighbors for almost 15 years and um, he's like an uncle to my kids. And he's like, hey girl, uh, I just like told some people to get up out of your front yard because they have picked almost all your grapes and they're picking your plums and I'm pretty sure they didn't ask you. I had no idea that there were people in my front yard. So I planned to make this video where I showed you all grape pressing. Um, most of those grapes are all gone and I don't really have enough to press grapes for that video. I have more grapes in the backyard that aren't quite ripe yet. So hopefully I'll still get to make that video. And so you might be saying like, Angela, what is, what is your response to that? That's two days in a row. People have been in your yard taking your fruit without permission, effectively stealing food out of your yard. And, you know, my neighbor confronted the woman who was there before and she's like, oh, I'm, you know, taking far more than one family could utilize. And for us, what I would do is pick what our family can use and then the rest would go on our honesty farm stand for people to just come and take, or if they were like, oh, thanks, they might like throw a couple of bucks in that Ruth uses uh, to supplement our poultry feed budget. So um, you might think like, okay, well, are you, are you pissed off that two days in a row people have come and have taken food out of your yard without asking, have stolen food from your yard, particularly yesterday, a large amount of food, like enough that I don't think I have enough to make grape juice, um, there's just a little bit, if I get up on a high ladder, there's some grapes left, but, um, most of them are gone. And you might think like, okay, am I upset? Am I pissed off? And, and you know, like, like not really, I'm not really pissed off. And I was thinking about this when I got home from my walk today and I was thinking about it yesterday as well. Like what, what do we say as permaculturists? What do we say if we are people who believe in earth care, people care and fair share? What do we think 
about a scenario when someone comes and steals food out of our yard, food that we have grown to feed our families and to share with our community. And that's a really complicated question. And I don't know that there's necessarily one right answer. And I don't know that I have thought it through all of the way, but I am definitely ruminating about it. And a while back last year, I had a set of photos that were taken in my front yard, like before and after, like when we bought the house and then in 2020. And those photos went viral because somebody else made, made a meme. And one of the comments I heard quite a bit was like, mm, if you grow food in your front yard, you're just asking for people to come and steal it. And in the 15 years that I've had this garden, people have stolen food out of my yard less than half a dozen times. I can think of I can think of five instances and maybe there's a time I didn't notice, but typically, I mean, I walk my garden every day. I'm I'm pretty on top of what food is on the cusp of ripening and I'm waiting to pick it and process it or give it away. So I'm really apt to notice very quickly if something is missing. So in 15 years, like five times, how many times do you think people have come and knocked on my door or found me in my garden and asked if they could have food out of my garden? more than twice the number of times. I would say every year between one and four people ask me if they can have food out of my yard. Sometimes it's like my neighbor across the street who came over and brought a bag of Asian pears from his pear tree and said, I wanna trade you um, this bag of pears for those two pumpkins in your front yard. And I was like, okay, sure. Sometimes it's people who just come and knock and say, could I take a bag of plums? Could I cut some grapes? I've had folks who knock on the front door and say, can I cut some of your lilacs? And if they come and knock, like my belief is that if you are somebody who will come and knock on the door of a stranger to ask if you can have some of their food, there's no way I'm gonna say no to you. Like 100% of the time. There was a time when we had Ruth and I was pregnant with B, and we were living like below the poverty line because my husband was in grad school. And we were really struggling to feed ourselves. And there was this, this street that we walked in our neighborhood in downtown Vancouver. We used to live on H and 32nd street. If you're familiar with downtown Vancouver, really lovely little neighborhood. And somebody in the hell strip had, had plums. They were Japanese plums. And I remember being like, Ruth as a toddler, just loved fruit, loved fruit. And I remember being like the, Plums were all dropping on the ground. And so on our walk every day, you know, after three or four days of noticing just how much fruit was dropping and me being like, oh my gosh, this is going to waste. If I had this fruit, I would make, you know, fruit leather for my toddler. She would have fresh fruit every day for a week. I could make a cobbler. I could make all this stuff and like just what a huge asset would be for me to like get a little box of plums, right? So I worked up the nerve, 24 year old me, pregnant, um, with my toddler and knocked on the front door. I said, I'm so sorry to bother you. Could I have some of your plums? I noticed that it seems like you aren't able to use all of them. And this woman who is probably the age that I am now was like, oh yeah, totally. But like, could you do me a favor? Take whatever you want, but could you pick a bowl for me and put them on my front step? Cause I haven't had time to pick any. And so, so that's what I did. Uh, she gave me a bowl. I filled the bowl for her. I set it on her front step and I had the stroller and I picked enough to fit in the, it was like a tray at the top of the jog stroller. And I went home and I made fruit leather and Ruth ate a bunch of fresh plums for a couple of days and it was wonderful. Such a gift. And when you're really struggling with food insecurity, like I don't think people who aren't struggling in that way can comprehend what a gift that is. So if, if you need food, uh, and you come and knock on my door and like work up the nerve to knock on the door of a stranger and like straight up ask them, can I have some of the food that you are growing in your garden? I will always say yes. And I understand when people might not be able to work up the nerve to knock on somebody's door. Like that's really, it's really difficult, especially in this day and age for if you're a person of color, um, I will say all the people who took fruit out of my yard the last two days were white people. But um, if you're a person of color, like you're not going to go knock on the door of a stranger um, unsolicited and just be like, hey, can I have some of your food? In America, at least, that is a risky proposition. So I get why somebody might not be able to work up the nerve to to ask. 
and why they might be so needy that they just take. So when my neighbor asked the woman who was picking yesterday, like, what are you doing? Did you ask my neighbor if you could pick any of her food? How do you know she's not using it? And she said, oh, well, I'm picking, I'm picking enough for me and mine. And a, a little bit when he told me that, like a little bit of me was like, mm, but some of that was for me and mine. I think, again, this is a complicated issue, right? So I don't love the idea that someone would just come and take something without asking, without engaging in that people care. Like, how do you know that our family isn't suffering from food insecurity? How do you know what I have gone through and what what um, importance that food out of my yard places, for, you know, has for me? How do you know that it's not designated for somebody or some charity or some organization? Like, what right do you have to come and presume and take it? So if someone comes and takes food out of your yard, dude, I totally understand. If you feel violated, you feel that someone came and helped themselves to something that was yours that you had worked for, I totally get being angry and upset. And I think that's a very natural, normal feeling. But getting back to the meme and how people are like, mm, you're just inviting people to come steal food out of your yard. Well, my neighbor's air conditioning is going to kick on. Um, I plan for redundancy. I don't know if you've noticed from some of my videos, but I have two plum trees right up by the street. And then I have three other plum trees elsewhere in my yard. And I have grapes right up by the street and I have grapes all the way in the backyard. So that I have redundancy and I have the expectation kind of built into my system that there might be folks who come and take without asking. And maybe they have a really real need and maybe they just cannot work up the nerve to knock on a stranger's door. Or, you know, maybe like they don't actually need, like maybe they've got room in their grocery budget to go buy grapes, but they just have an attitude of um, entitlement and they're gonna come steal something from me. But what grew those grapes and what grew those plums was the sun and the soil that I have uh, cultivated in a way that it kind of can do its own thing. And so it's very little cost to me when I build redundancy into my system and the expectation that not only will birds help themselves and squirrels help themselves, but sometimes people will help themselves. And that makes it much easier for me to not feel so violated and to not feel ticked off and to kind of let go and say, you know what, I'm gonna chalk this up to fair share. This is a fair share that I am allowing to, to leave my property with no animosity, no hard feelings, and no real detriment, detriment to myself. So like I said, I'm not going to get to make all of the grape juice that I wanted to make this year, but I've made my grape jelly and I've made some grape juice and I'll have more grapes in a week or so in the backyard and I will still be able to make some grape juice. There's a very small cost to my family. We will not go hungry in this household because someone stole grapes out of my front yard. But if that means that somebody is able to make grape jelly or grape juice or raisins and they would not otherwise have been able to access that kind of you know like organic local nutritious fruit okay i don't need to be angry about it when people saw that meme and saw that was an opportunity to just like kind of snark on my design or say like well you're just gonna be really angry and you're gonna need to like defend your property with like motion sensor sprinklers or like weapons i don't know what people are thinking like fences or whatever Build it into your permaculture design to have some fair share, to have some people care. And by people care, I don't mean just like folks who need the food are able to access it and you're caring for them in that way. But people care also includes yourself, right? How can you keep yourself from becoming jaded and bitter and angry? And when you build redundancy into the system, when you build in some expectation that if you grow food in your front yard, a portion of it may walk off your property and into somebody else's stomach. That is okay. If I know that it's there, I can save myself from bitterness and anger. And, and all of the, the folks who came by in the last couple of days, like live in my neighborhood, they're walking and, you know, putting food in their stroller or whatever. And I don't want to build up a feeling of resentment and distrust and anger toward my neighbors or toward people that are struggling with food insecurity. So I would just encourage you, this is a way longer video than I planned on, but I would just encourage you, if you have a permaculture design where you're growing food in the front yard, how can you build in redundancy as a way to embody fair share, as a way to embody people care for folks in your community who have food insecurity, 
for folks in your community who aren't brave enough to knock on the door of a stranger, for folks in your community who, you know, may feel that they're entitled to help themselves and they really should know better, but you're not going to have confrontation with them. And how can you have people care for yourself in a way that protects your heart, protects your future goals, protects your peace from that kind of bitterness and jadedness that can, can creep in otherwise. So, you know, I don't have all the grapes and the plums that I otherwise would have this year, but hopefully those three families that came and took food out of my yard, I hope they're enjoying the harvest. And I hope that, you know, maybe somewhere in there, it sparks some desire for them to learn more about what I'm doing in my yard. And maybe next time I'm out gardening and they come by, they'll talk to me and we'll, you know, strike up a conversation or I hope that it helps make them more food secure. And it is something that does not have to make me an angry person. It's something that I don't have to see as a loss because I've already come to expect it. I can see it as a benefit and my design functioning as intended. So thanks for watching today. Um, fingers crossed for all of us, knock on wood, say a prayer, whatever you do, that nobody else in our house comes down with COVID and that all of my kids are healthy for their first day of college on Monday. And I hope that you all enjoy your weekend and there's a dog circling on the bed, shaking everything. I hope that you all enjoy your weekend and you're staying well and safe. And I have several more videos I have filmed that will be coming out. And I'm sorry this one is jumping the queue, but I really wanted to do it because it's what's happening in my life right now. Um, please don't forget to click like and subscribe and I'll be back really soon. Bye-bye.